Hello and welcome back to the Folklore Hiking Stick Workshop. I'm going to discuss with you copper tips, why I use copper tips, you know, um, what the theory is behind it and the, the basics of actually fitting it and what it actually does and how it looks after it's been used heavily. So you can get the whole picture from the, from the concept to the actual applying it to what it does look like when it's being used and um, I think it's uh, a relative subject that I want to cover because quite simply um, most manufacturers will use pre-made uh, tips for their hiking sticks or walking sticks, canes, whatever model of stick they're making. Um, I choose not to um, that is a personal preference to myself as a stick maker, but let's get straight into it. Right then, so I'm holding a piece of copper pipe in my hand and um, it's of 22 uh, gauge uh, UK and um, I have four sticks that need tips putting on. I do have a custom a shepherd's crook i've been working on that for what feels like uh, forever doing a little bit putting it down doing a little bit putting it down um the gent one's in no hurry and i've had um a lot of sticks just go out recently through various means and methods so i'm replenishing my stock hence that's taking a little bit of a back seat but I, in any case i've got three there i want to put tips on and this will be the raw product um it's readily available within the UK and it's pretty much the most used uh, domestic um, size as in um, copper pipe. You can get a 15 mil, which is slightly smaller. I do believe I have a piece here just uh, out of interest as a reference. And you can see the difference. This one here. Um, of no value to me as a hiking stick maker so i'll put that back and use this in my own plumbing when i do need it so why copper why not anything else i could get my hands on like galvanized uh steel um you know uh, you know stainless steel anything you know there's a raft of other options i could possibly use the simple uh, answer is it's relatively cheap it's commercially available in a lot of stores uh, even ordinary diy stores and possibly the biggest advantage to me it doesn't rust or corrode badly to the point it becomes um unserviceable copper once it starts i mean this has been racked for a while and you can see a bit of green on it there that will polish out extremely easy and once it's applied to the hiking stick uh, as the finished um, tip it does look very nice it, it, it blends in and it doesn't look out of place and it like I said you can polish it up to give it a real nice wow factor Copper is soft, it's malleable, so it can be worked with basic hand tools, which is a plus for myself. And on top of that, when it's being used in the hiking stick uh, configuration, it will bend like a, a, and it will actually deform in such a way that it becomes a positive use to the hiking stick and the user. It will create a bit of a, a lip, an elephant's foot, if I call it that, and which will give you good purchase on soft ground. Rubber tips do have a bit of flex and give, and it doesn't always provide a positive feel to the ground. This won't give. It's a solid, um, you know, substance. And, um, you know, once it strikes the ground, it will strike the ground and it will stay where it is. Copper does actually have some ability to, you know, become shockproof, not like harder metals. 
and it acts in the same way as uh, a copper hammer for people who have uh, any engineering knowledge know that if you've got a difficult metal item and you don't want to damage the metal you will use a copper hammer because you can apply a blunt force trauma to what you're trying to hit and the copper will absorb some of that direct uh, shock and transfer the force into the object you're hitting so that's another plus and um, yeah uh, for me in the area I'm to on a history of uh, note I'm here in North Cornwall and before I start I'm fully aware this isn't Cornish um, uh, copper and it's probably from China if it was stamped or marked but um, yeah I'm fully aware of that before I say this um, Cornwall was a big tin producing uh, county and in indeed all the way around me the phoenix mines and all the other mines around me copper was the uh, uh, secondary byproduct from tin mining and um, quite often where tin mines were you could find uh, copper in existence so that was also mined so it has that connection to me copper in this location uh, quite simply because of all the tin mining activity which subsequently copper was like a secondary mining byproduct if you want to call it that way although it was exclusively mined in its own right here so yeah so i use it for that historical context and you know it kind of gives me as a local stick maker here that little connection to using this product that would have come out of the ground here in Cornwall where I'm too. Right I've got four of my own personal hiking sticks here and I'll just run through and let you have a look at the tips. So uh, a long-standing one that I've had it's an oak and uh, you know English oak and it's I didn't really straighten this one I love the curves just the way it is because of those curves it does mean when it's used it does strike the ground slightly different to where my hand is so you can quite happily see I've got a curve on the actual copper tip that's quite simply because where I hold it the curves mean for me to hold it straight the stick is in such a, um, an angle that it strikes the ground at an angle but in any case you can see the wood has actually compressed on the inside so as that um, has been striking the ground that wood in itself as that you've been hammered completely all the way around inside of that copper tube there and you can see that thick lip there it's kind of like an elephant's foot when that digs into the ground it doesn't move like a copper um, uh, ferrule uh, or like a, a rubber ferrule shall I say and it gives a really strong positive feel the only disadvantage I will say is if you're on sheet rock or, or hard rock you have to be careful that you've got good purchase that it doesn't just slip off but in any soft ground or or you know like shale or gravel this will bite into it and it is it's pretty much what I'm walking on anyway so that's that one and you can see how with a, a slightly off center um, hiking stick how it translates to that copper tip being slanted this is this one here has been heavily heavily used on tarmac and road uh, particularly with my young dog it I did all my training with this uh, stick here it's a straight stick dead straight and and in such case you can see the copper tip has struck the ground at a straight angle and it's basically peeled back over itself to provide a bigger metal area and yet again that wood is totally compressed in there it's picked up whatever it's picked up along the road as well and um it doesn't absorb moisture that uh, readily because the wood is so compact 
um, it's been hammered and hammered and hammered. It's not like a loose wood, which like, like a sponge draws water in. It will still take water if left outside. Um, I use mine in adverse weather conditions and they end up coming in anyway. But that wood becomes so compact, it's not as readily accepting of water as just a loose piece of wood would be. But you can quite easily see that's done 90% of its work on lanes and roads and hence the the tip as you can see that's bent over this has got plenty of life left in it and i didn't use a full uh, copper uh, tip on it anyway um, i just had a few odd bits around and i used so standing up very well i've got one here if i put this down this one here is a longer stick than I usually have, which means I can reach out, flick it out. And I use this and I have used this extensively on long distance hikes because it offers me a good amount of um, weight distribution when, from my pack when I'm carrying that I can put on the stick rather than it being lower. Um, hence, I've got a slight curve on this actual one here, but as you can see, yet again, compact wood. That wood just feels like steel in itself. It's been hammered into a compact um, yeah, mass. And yet again, I do have a lip there. This stick here, incidentally, looking at that tip, I do have videos of me using this stick walking up the mountains uh, Sierra de Estrella in Portugal and all around Portugal. Real hot 40 degrees heat and, you know, off, you know, really hard, gravelly, stony conditions. And as you can see, it's still there in one piece. I'll bring you on to this one here which isn't really that relevant because quite simply this is kind of a uh, not a novelty shall i say a specialist tip um i do have videos on my bush uh, whacker model but as you can see i've been using this yet again it's gone into a compressed dome of wood and that's swelled inside the tube to make it more firm and the copper's come out there and it's almost given a real sharp uh, lip there this does bite into the ground and that lip there when you do swing this as a mass does actually help slice and you know smash its way through vegetation but th this tip here as you can see is still standing up well um, it's been used as quite a lot of dents throughout it because I'm using this as a bushwhacking model and it's striking other wo wood and um, vegetation and it, it is heavily pitted and dented, but it hasn't uh, caused any damage or the copper hasn't split. It's it's all in one piece and I'm pleased with the way that's turned out. Right then, you can actually cut this with a hacksaw. Like I said, it's very easy workable, but I do have a pipe cutter. There are various uh, different types of pipe cutter, but I've just got one of these round ones. And basically I'm looking to cut, as a generic average I found, about an inch and a half. Um, my standard model is usually about an inch and a half of copper. And, um, it will go up to two and a half depending on the actual model. Um, custom ones, if somebody really wants a, a bigger um, copper uh, tip, I go up to three on the very, very rare occasion, three and a half inch. Um, but that's very rare and that's only if I'm asked. But as a rule, an inch and a half will suffice. But the sticks behind me there will require more of a two inch um, uh, tip due to the way I've chamfered down the tip. So when you're cutting it, you will have to, um, take into consideration your actual tip and how you chamfered it down. This one here, 
that I've already got cut, I can see it's possibly just a little bit long. I could, this is a, uh, just about over two inches. So I could probably lose a quarter of an inch for it to fit pretty much on that um, way I've chamfered this wood down into the actual dowel of the tip. So I'm going to keep this for one of the other ones and I'm going to cut a few and I'll probably do them a bit smaller than this to fit my other sticks that I do have to do here. So I'm going to cut this now and I'm just going to use this which is the piece I just showed you and I want I already said I want it a bit smaller than that. I've cut one uh, which is about the size I want so I'm going to just I've got a measuring uh, um, scribe on the table but uh, just for uh, should we say the camera I'm just going to offer it up like that put this up like that just get a rough idea and with this one it's just quite simply to turn it and it will cut through the pipe like I said there are other um, cutting tools just keep turning till you feel it go loose and there it is off so basically I've got the start of my tip there do another one no, just guess this one no. doing it on the cuff here I usually measure it um, like I said because I do quite a few hiking sticks uh, like I said as a crafter I do measure because obviously I want to try and ensure you know basically uh, the materials I use I'm able to extract some sort of financial benefit uh, uh, to myself that I'm basically not just guessing everything and um, basically throwing money away so yes yeah. so I've already cut them and now we're going to go and actually make this tip Right then, if you've cut with a hacksaw, what you will find is that you'll have, you won't have got it square. That's totally square, as in the end, it looks like it's totally flush. You will find you'll have angles and you'll have to file them down to get it to be pretty much um, square like this. So using a tool does aid you in that respect. But what a tool does do it actually crimps the pipe over if you have a look it's crimped over because the wheels are pushing the copper and because the copper is soft it slightly bends in so it's got a slight crimp I have to remove that on one end and it's the end that will flow down over the wooden uh, dowel peg or where you chamfered it so if that's your tip you're going to slide this over it's going to go down over it like that. That lip will score and catch the wood all the way down through the, the um, fitting of the process. So we need to remove that edge. What I'm going to do, I, if you've got a Dremel and you've got tools that you can use to do that, all well and good. But I'm just going to use an old chainsaw uh, file and I'm going to file around there on the inside till I take off that chamfer. Right, as you can see, there's a tube, there's the chamfer. I'm going, now going to remove that with a chainsaw uh, file. Um, as you can see, it's a very rudimentary put together tool of mine. I don't need to do it to the other end and if you leave that that will help fold in around onto the wood before being pushed out to make the elephant feet which will help uh, encapsulate the wood and make it a stronger fit so right I've chosen what end I'm going to file it's simply I'm going to lock it into position on the table here and um, this table here has grooves going into the wooden slat underneath, which conveniently is a good aid for me to hold it. And all I'm doing is going around that wooden, uh, the, the actual copper pipe 
in such a manner to remove the chamfer my side but I'm doing it at an angle so it's it's right not doing it straight I'm riding inside the actual tube like that so this end is taking the chamfer off this end up here is basically floating on the opposite side in midair I'm not touching the tube because as I've just said I want to leave that right you will see on this one here if I come back that I do actually have some burrs on it so I'm going to clean that up with a file firstly I'm going to put the angled corner inside I'm going to run it around just to clean out any of the uh, chamfers waste uh, copper that may still be in there once I've done that I'm going to use the other side of the file and basically I'm going to take all the sharp edges off I would recommend you wear glasses and gloves for this because uh, copper splinters can fly everywhere or get embedded in your skin so safety precautions on that so I'm just giving it a clean up and this, this obviously not just for your own safety or somebody else's safety using the stick, but it also aids later on when we put it onto the wood. So that's looking nice and clean now. And I'm quite happy with that to move on to the next stage. So here we are and um, we're at the point I've got my four done there. I'm now going to actually put a slight hole opposite sides at different depths within the actual um, copper tube there to actually put some small pins if I can open them. I've done this before and I've wasted them all over the floor. And um, believe you me, it's a job to pick them all up again. So some small pins through into the wood of the hiking stick. But you need to make sure your pin doesn't go right the way through and then exit the other side of the actual tube. But that's something you will have to experiment with yourself. But basically, copper is soft. So you have to, you know, be prepared to work it in a sensible, careful manner because it will actually crush very easily. Um, a very small bit of metalworking knowledge will actually aid you in this uh, process, but it's not required. Right, so basically I'm going to put this in the vise. Um, you could protect it either end, but I've done this for so long, I know that I, you know, what sort of pressure to stop at to not crush or damage the actual uh, copper um, tube. So basically, I'm putting it in the vise, just applying just enough pressure to hold it in position without crushing it. And like I said, copper is very malleable. Now, I have a drill here with a small drill bit. I'm going to drill just part way through the copper tube's wall to create a countersink. I'll do it and then I'll uh, show you. Just double check I've got it the right way round because, yep, at the, you want to do your first hole at the top where you filed and actually took the, uh, the chamfer off the inside the pipe. You don't want to be drilling too far down near where it's going to be striking the ground. I'm doing it very gently, gently. And I have a nice little chamfer. Basically, almost like a little pit. If you can imagine a very small meteorite hitting it and leaving a small crater. I'm now going to get something as simple as a sharpened nail. I've put that on a grinder. And I'm just placing it inside that uh, drill mark that we did. And all I'm doing is tapping gently, because it's copper, we have to remember that. 
to create a big enough hole and I'll let you have a look and you can see exactly what I've done there you can probably see the chamfer which will allow the head of the tack to sit in and yet we still have a hole there right the way through for the tack to pass through the copper tube right so we now have the finished item as in the copper tip is obviously not polished that'll be part of my finishing process when it's actually the stick has been varnished and it's all coming to the point i'm getting it ready for sale but uh, you can polish it at the moment but there's every chance you might end up getting either um you know any kind of finish that you're using on it so you're going to have to clean it then anyway so now we've got to get this onto a hiking stick or a crook whichever i've got to get this on the bottom and i'll demonstrate Right, first thing, I'm going to put a rubber pad on the floor. That is to protect the head of my actual stick. If you have a stick with, well, like the actual crook, I'm obviously not going to put that on the floor and hit it on. It will probably require just that little more finesse in making sure these bits go together. As you can see, that one just fits on like that. And as I gently hammer it down, it will go on. But I'll do it with holding it. But as a rule, what you'll do is get your hiking stick like this and just place it on that rubber pad. So you have this end facing up to you. Right then. If this was going to be a boiled linseed hiking stick finish, I would lubricate it with boiled linseed these are going to be polyurethane i haven't worried too much about the finish here because obviously it's going to be covered with the actual uh, copper tube which is going to be obviously the tip so i'm going to lubricate this with a spray polyurethane which i have here and i will get it out Yeah. and make sure i'm using the right one yes i'm going to use the bigger one on that one so i'm going to use this one i'm just basically sizing it up so i've got the best um copper tip for each individual stick because ultimately they will all be individual items so basically this is a um a nondescript polyurethane uh spray uh, obviously safety precautions masks everything you need you know all i'm going to do is give it a very light dusting this also helps waterproof the wood inside the tube so you'll see it's gone darker there that's wet of the polyurethane it will take moments to dry so you have a little bit of time unlike working with epoxy inside the tube here which is here i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to put some polyurethane inside it so there not too much you don't need to swamp everything just move that i've now put the hiking stick on the floor and resting on that pad i'm picking this one up and i'm placing it down over and it's seating down very nicely right now I've just got to hammer home and I'll keep going this one needs to be hammered with a piece of copper or tip from an old hiking stick I actually use to actually push the hiking stick down or the copper tube down onto the hiking stick and I'm just working it all the way around if you've sized correctly which I haven't done on this one you won't have to do this but as i'm doing this i'll show you i'm taking it right the way down there that's pretty much as much as i want to go on that one now 
if you had sized correctly, you wouldn't have this protruding. I'm going to cut this off at this um, uh, point here. But as you can see, that's gone totally, totally flush, completely up to the butt where the chamfer goes up into the girth. So it's butted up against a piece of wood. Right, you come back. I've used a junior hacksaw to cut, cut this off. I'm just going to just put a little bit of a file over this just to flush it all up. And as you can see, that's looking very nice there now. But the reason you use a junior hacksaw or a metal, a small metal saw is because if you're using your woodworking tools, they will occasionally be touching or rubbing up against that copper tube, i.e. metal, even though it's soft you're damaging your woodworking tools. It may be a little bit tedious going through wood with one of these, but you don't stand to hurt your woodworking tools. So that's what I would recommend for this process. One thing to remember, whatever type of end you've got, particularly if it's a peaked or a crown, even though you've got a rubber pad on the floor, it can leave a slightly darker mark you may just have to give it a very light sand but you do not want to be hitting and hitting because you can split your end so if you're hitting and getting nowhere you're going to have to do something like reduce the actual neck and i'll just show you if you're hitting this on and it's just not going down either try to retrieve it back out and take more wood off or you'll have to with it in place try to take more wood off you don't want to these that's last ditch resort efforts to get it to work you really don't want to be at that point in the first place but uh, that's just if it does happen that way always try to get this so that you think or it looks like it will go down as this one did right as you can see i've cut it there got it all clean i've just run a file we now have to put the pins in the holes all I'm going to do is get a pin place it there and without hitting my fingers just gently tap it through as I've stated you want the size that will go through but not come through the wall on the opposite side something to bear in mind and I have made that mistake myself Right, I've got the pin. I'm resting it on a piece of wood clamped in the vise. As we've said, copper is very uh, soft. You do not want to keep hitting and hitting and bashing. So when you're putting the pin in, make sure that it has enough free flow that it's not binding up so you're continually whacking with a hammer. All I'm doing now is tapping it to seat the pin which you can see there, hopefully. You might be able to see the pin just there. And it's, it's there on its own accord. With the hammer, I'm just holding this firm here. I'm tapping it down through. And being careful, I don't strike the copper tube. Once it gets to the end, I'm actually being more careful not as in hitting it right so with one pin in i'll spin it around i'll find the next hole and i'll repeat that process like i said when you're dealing with the tip at this point i know it's going to be used it's going to be bashed around as a hiking stick but at this point here what you're trying to do is start off with a nice nice item um, it's going to get used and abused and deformed through use but it's like when when a customer is buying something new it should always look like you know presentable and a finished new item so i'm going to bash this one so I, bash this one in as of the first one and then we'll have a look and i've just dropped that pin you want to find them 
you run those up your feet, they do hurt. Right there, sorry about that, putting those pins in. Every time I was bashing it, everything was moving around. But uh, it may look brutal, but um, I was being very careful. But in any case, you can see those pins in there. And that's why you do the, the, uh, the countersink, so the head can sit down as far as it can within the actual walls of the actual copper. So that's come out pretty nice. But... To finish copper up with, don't use sandpaper because you'll you'll score it up. It will clean it if it's a very fine grade sandpaper. But a fine steel wool, just basically, you know, it takes a bit of time, a bit of effort. And just basically keep going around and keep going around. And as you can see, you can bring up a shine. I would still have to do, you know, a good five or ten minutes more on that piece there. But just doing that, you can see the shine come through. And it does look quite striking when you're out on the trail. So that's how I do or manufacture my um, copper uh, tips. Fit them with a compression fit. And on top of that, clean up. And how I basically assemble the whole item in this this well basic process. Um, I hope you kind of enjoyed that. I do realise that uh, some people or most people will want to go to a bought and tip, and that's perfectly um, you know normal and acceptable, and you know the normal process. But I make mine because obviously it has that connection to. The area I live, the metal that came from the ground, even though we have discussed that's probably Chinese copper. But, you know, it's uh, all one world, as they say now. But uh, in any case, um, I hope you enjoyed that. This is Andy from Folklore Hiking Sticks. All the best. I hope to catch you guys out on the trail. I'm going to be in here for a while doing the rest of these and the wood burning and the finishing. And I'm hoping to get out of here and have a drink later on. Take care. Stay safe.